Welcome to Spine Surgery Education Class. Thank you for joining me as you prepare for spine surgery. My name is Marian Funderburg and I'm one of the orthopedic spine nurse navigators. This class has been developed by the doctors, nurses, and therapists that will be taking care of you during your hospitalization. This class is to make you and your family aware of the preparation required for spinal surgery and some idea of what to expect during your hospital stay and rehab period after surgery. Please use your spine surgery book as a resource guide. This book is given out in our spine education class and can also be mailed to your home. In addition to our class today, I will show you how to access physical therapy videos on our website. Please go to www.universityhealth.org. Click on the Services and Departments link and then choose the Orthopedic and Spine Services tab. Click on the Recovery and Rehabilitation tab. On this page, you will have access to the spine video. We will now discuss who will be involved in your care during hospitalization. Your neurosurgeon and or orthopedic surgeon and physician assistant will be performing your surgery and will be in charge of your plan of care. The anesthesiologist will administer the medication to put you to sleep during surgery and then reverse the effects of medications to allow you to slowly awake. They may call you the evening before surgery to obtain a medical history, obtain a list of medications that you currently take. They will also remind you not to have anything to drink or eat after 12 midnight. Orthopedic Spine Nurse Navigator is an educator and also coordinates services under the direction of your physician. Physical therapy will assist you in making a recovery plan following spine surgery. They will teach you the necessary exercises you will need to perform to regain balance, stability, and strength, and to evaluate the need of any medical equipment. Occupational therapy may work with you following your surgery. They will help you get through the recovery process smoother and show you adaptive equipment you might like to have. Your nursing team on the ninth floor will carry out the plan of care as ordered by your physician. You will be in a private room after your surgery and recovery. Your case manager is a registered nurse who will make sure you have a safe discharge plan. If needed, a dietitian may see diabetic patients and anyone else who has any special dietary needs. The pharmacist will ensure medication safety during your hospitalization. We have a chaplain that can be consulted at any time during your hospitalization. Manufacturer's technical representative is in the operating room with the instrumentation that may have been ordered for you by your surgeon. They leave after the instrumentation has been implanted. They do not perform any surgery. Let's learn together about the anatomy of your spine. Your physician will go into detail and inform you on the specifics of your particular back surgery in the office. This is a very brief anatomy lesson. Your spine is made up of individual bones called the vertebrae. They are stacked on top of each other. There are 24 vertebrae from the cervical to the lumbar spine. Total 33 vertebrae. Functions of the vertebrae include protection of the spinal cord and internal organs, support for the head, shoulders, chest, connects the upper to the lower part of the body, balance and weight distribution and for flexibility and mobility of the body. It's never too early to start preparing for spine surgery. Attend the spine education preoperative class. You may be asked to get medical clearance from your primary care physician and or cardiologist. You also may be asked to donate blood at Shepherd Community Blood Center. If needed, verify insurance coverage for rehab, home health care, and durable medical equipment. If not planning to go home at time of discharge, visit any facilities where you might go for rehabilitation. Begin thinking about these ideas concerning making sure your home is ready and safe for your return. Good lighting in the home. Ensure walkways are clear for the path of walking. Remove throw rugs or any loose carpeting 
that could put you at risk for tripping and falling. Consider purchasing night lights for the bedroom and bathroom and hallway in your home. Obtain a bath mat for your shower. Most home accidents happen in the bathroom. Place items in the kitchen and bathroom at waist level. Arrange for caregiver to assist with transportation, preparation of meals, running errands, paying bills, and taking care of your pets. Set up a recovery center at home by choosing your favorite chair to sit in upon your return home. Be sure to check with your surgeon about using a recliner after your surgery. Make sure you have a box of tissue, reading glasses, crossword puzzle, books, and magazines nearby within reach. Glass of water and snacks within reach. Cellular, portable phone, and remote control within reach. Preoperative testing at the outpatient center. This is a picture of where you will be coming for your pre-op appointment. You may park outside the front entrance. As you enter, you may turn right and get onto the elevator to come into the second floor to register for surgery and meet with your preoperative nurse. This is a picture of the registration area. After registration and complete, you will go to a pre-op room. This is where the nurse will meet with you to obtain a health history and you will be given information about how to get ready for surgery. You may have lab work, an EKG, chest x-ray, an MRI, and a nasal swab for MRSA and MSSA. A nursing database will be completed to cover current and past medical and surgical history. Please bring all of your medications in the original bottles for your nurse to record in our computer systems. Here is a picture of the nasal swab. This will be sent to the lab for testing. If you are positive, meaning that you carry the bacteria in your nose, then a prescription of mupirocin will be called into your pharmacy. People can pick up this bacteria from anywhere in the community, and it just lives in your nose. The pre-op nurse will give you the Betasep surgical wash that you see pictured on the right side of this slide. You will be instructed to take a shower in the solution the evening before surgery and the morning of surgery. Do not apply to your hair, face, and private areas. After washing in this solution, be sure to sleep in clean clothes and sleep on clean bed linens. On the day of surgery, do not eat anything after 12 midnight. You may want to eat a light supper the night before surgery. Take a shower the morning of surgery using the Betasep solution. Bring your tube of ointment if you were called for a positive result of MRSA and MSSA. Do not apply any additional hair products. Also, do not apply makeup, lotions, perfumes, nail polish, jewelry, hairpins, nor deodorant. Do not shave or remove hair from any part of your body. Remember, no alcohol or smoking for 24 hours prior to your surgery. On the day of surgery, you will come to Surgery Care Center located on the second floor of the hospital. You will have a private room. Many activities will occur when you are in Surgery Care Center. The nurse or PCA will have you change into a hospital gown. An ID armband will be placed on your wrist. Lab work may be drawn. You may empty your bladder and certain medications may be given. You will also wear non-skid socks to prevent falling. You will need to remove dentures, hearing aids, contacts, jewelry, and etc. Your surgeon and anesthesiologist will come visit you and ensure surgical site verification for your safety. They will visit just before going back to the operating room to give you a sedative through your IV to relax and calm you. The circulator nurse will also come visit you and will be the nurse by your side during surgery. The length of surgery depends on the type of surgery you are having. Your family will wait in the waiting room on the second floor. The surgeon will come update your family after the surgery has been completed. Your family will be given a computer tracking number to track your progress. After surgery, you will go to the recovery room for a minimum of one hour. 
you will be wearing oxygen, an IV with IV fluids, which is connected to an IV pump. You may have a Foley catheter, a blood pressure cuff on your arm, sequential compression devices will be placed on your lower legs, a hemovac or JP drain may be attached to your back, which is a suction device to collect drainage. This will be emptied by the nursing staff. When your vital signs are stable, you will be transferred to the ninth floor. Before being administered any pain medication, you will rate your pain on a scale of 0 to 10, 0 being the least amount of pain to 10 being the most amount of pain. After administration of any pain medication, your nurse will ask you to re-rate your pain to ensure the medication is relieving your pain. You will have PRN medications, which means as needed. These medications are ordered by your physician and the nurse will only give you these medications when you ask for them. Do not be afraid to ask for pain medication. This is a picture of a room on the ninth floor. Here, your vital signs will be taken frequently. You will be served a clear liquid diet to start out with, and you will be wearing oxygen and a pulse oximeter monitor on your finger to monitor the oxygen level in your bloodstream. Your IV fluids will also be continued. You may have physical and occupational therapy later in the day. You may be discharged on the same day of surgery depending on the type of procedure you are having. On post-op day one, your nurse will come into your room early in the morning to draw labs so that your surgeon can view the results when he comes to visit you. Your surgeon will visit. You will have a regular breakfast and meals to follow for the day. Your vital signs will be checked. Your oxygen and pulse oximeter will be discontinued. Also, your hemovac or JP drain may be discontinued. Lastly, your IV fluids may be stopped, but your IV site will remain until discharge. On post-op day two, your nurse will come into your room early in the morning to draw labs so that your surgeon can view the results when he comes to visit you. Your surgeon will visit. You will have a regular breakfast and meals to follow for the day. Your vital signs will be checked. Your surgeon may order for you to be seen by physical therapy in the a.m. and again in the p.m. You also may be possibly discharged home. On post-op day three, your nurse will come into your room early in the morning to draw labs so that your surgeon can view the results when he comes to visit you. Your surgeon will come and visit. You will have a regular breakfast and meals to follow for the day. Your vital signs will be checked. You may be seen by your physical therapist if you are going home or to a rehab, you may possibly be discharged home on this day. Your surgeon will order physical therapy when they think it's appropriate. Physical therapy will work with you on stair training. They will work with you each day until therapy goals are reached. Physical therapy helps circulate blood flow and promotes taking good deep breaths. Here I will discuss with you two different things we use in the hospital to prevent complications after surgery. The first is using the incentive spirometer 10 times an hour while you're awake. This moves air around in your lungs to prevent pneumonia. Next is a device called sequential compression device. These are wraps that are placed on your lower legs and are connected to a pump that inflates and deflates with air to move circulation around to prevent blood clot formation. You will have a few precautions following surgery. Limit sitting to 20 to 30 minutes at a time. Do not twist, bend, reach. Lift no more than a half a gallon of milk. Push, pull heavy objects or drive until your surgeon clears you to do so. Listed on this slide is different types of equipment you may need following surgery. Your physical therapist will work with you to evaluate your needs. First is a rolling walker to help you walk after surgery. Second is a bedside commode. If you are tall or have low toilets, you may want to consider purchasing this item or a toilet riser. Most surgeons encourage patients to walk to aid in the recovery process. Also, wear your brace as instructed by your surgeon. Make sure to keep your incision dry at all times. 
please use good hand hygiene at home. Have a family member or friend look at your dressing daily for five days, then every other day. You may remove your dressing and shower when your surgeon instructs you to do so. This is usually in three to five days after surgery, depending on your surgeon. Remember, no tub baths. Following dismissal from the hospital, call your physician for sudden severe pain in the back or legs that pain medication does not resolve, inability to move your arms or your legs as you did in the hospital, sudden loss of bladder or bowel function, any questions you may have regarding your recent surgery. If you are having pus-like drainage from your wound or if your wound opens up or for large amounts of drainage, your follow-up appointment will be on your discharge paperwork. Please call 911 for chest pain, difficulty breathing, or difficulty swallowing. Start planning for discharge now. A case manager and social worker will be assigned to each patient to assist with planning for discharge. Plan for who will transport you to doctor visits, physical therapy, who will cook and provide meals, assist you with showering and dressing, completing errands, caring for other family members and pets, grocery shopping, and making sure that your home is clean. Following hospitalization, your discharge plans will be based on physician preference, home with family or significant other to assist in your care, home health care, outpatient rehab, your physician may recommend inpatient rehab. There are two types of rehab, subacute and acute. Subacute rehab, also known as skilled nursing home rehab, this is therapy that is shorter in duration and inpatient stay may be a little longer than acute rehab. This also requires insurance approval. This approval happens after surgery during your hospitalization stay as it is based on how you are doing following surgery and also based on your performance with physical therapy. Acute rehab. This inpatient rehab consists of three hours of therapy per day. You must meet medical necessity to go to rehab and must have insurance approval. Don't forget to rest. You have had major surgery. You will need frequent rest periods each day. Make sure you set a small goal each day and try to achieve this goal. Give yourself time to heal. Tips for at home. It is very important to take your pain medication as prescribed by your physician. Do not drive until your physician instructs you to do so. Avoid alcohol while taking pain medications. Make sure to drink at least six to eight glasses of water a day if you have no history of cardiac problems, which limit your fluid intake. Add fiber to your diet with eating fruits, vegetables, and grains to avoid constipation after surgery. Our spinal surgery recovery prayer is, Dear Lord, grant me patience, but hurry up. Please call me for any questions you have following this PowerPoint. You may reach me at 706-774-5926. Thank you for allowing University Healthcare Systems to provide care for you to get you back in the game of life.